and for Brendan Goddard and for the Bombers, they finished the season on a high. Well done to you, BJ, and well done to the Bombers tonight. Thanks for joining us, BJ. You got a great send off on Friday. Take us through the emotion of the week and the match. Uh, well, the week didn't start off too well. Um, getting the news from Wilshire on Monday, and then yeah, my initial reaction was a fair bit of shock. And um, as much as I'd prepared for it, didn't go down as well as I thought it would. As much as I prepared, so yeah, it was a pretty pretty tough start to the week. And then um, you get on the roller coaster on Monday, and then uh, obviously come off it. You know, Friday, Saturday after the game, but uh, yeah, it was pretty tough to deal with. And after gathering my thoughts after Monday, Tuesday, being pretty raw, uh, still, um, I was able to get my uh, get my stuff together and uh, enjoy the week and enjoy Friday night for what it was. Now, before and after the game, you were joined by your family, and little Billy's always running around the around the rooms before and after every game. What does their support mean to you? Ah uh, yeah, immediate family, um, mum, dad, sisters, brother have been there since day dot. So uh, I know it's a, a cliche and a throwaway line, but um, I wouldn't be here without them and their support. So, and then in more recent times, the last ten years, um, had Rosie by my side, uh, and then now the last couple of years, Billy and, and little Mackenzie. So uh, Rosie's support. Um, yeah, they, the, the partners, wives and girlfriends ride the footy roller coaster. As I've gotten older, you realise that f there's, there's a lot more to football. It's easy to, easy to think that and be entrenched in it when you are younger, but uh, as, I've, as I've learnt and uh, since having Rosie um, in my life and now the kids, it's, uh, there's a lot more important things to, than footy, as much as you know, I love it and it, it is important, but uh, there's a list and, and my family and friends and my future are the priorities. Do you think that really hit home on Friday night in particular? Oh yeah, definitely. It's um, different stages during the week where I got lost in just still thinking about footy and um, there are different times. Then when walking into the club on on Thursday for captain's run and uh, had to then, you know, I got reminded that this is the last time I, you know, potentially, you know, walking, well, it was walking in as a, uh, an Essendon player to play play a game of football was my last captain's run, um, my last game for Essendon on Friday night. So having them there, and it was interstate, so it was a unique situation too. So they obviously don't normally travel with me interstate, but having them there made it real and reminded me that this was the last time I played footy for Essendon. So um, then having friends, family, post game, pre game, it, uh, it made it all real. But it, yeah, once a siren sounded, it um, it definitely hit home. But uh, I was reminded before the game actually with a, a good friend of mine, Alex Rewalt, that, uh, and Nick himself, but they reminded me that I'm going to have a lot more first in life now that footy's over, so um, I've got that at the front of my mind. Now let's go back to the start at Essendon. You joined the club when it was a really well positioned club, but you were obviously forced into a really difficult period. How much did that hurt initially and are you proud of the way that you really persevered through that time? Uh, did, I never, never felt sorry for myself. I'm, um, live and die by the sword and the decisions I make. So um, it was an unfortunate circumstance for all of it. So um, I was never once cried poor me because no one foreseen any of that to happen. So I just, I, I, I played my role. I did what I'd expect other guys to do in my position. So I didn't, I didn't feel like it was a big deal. And that's what they needed me to do. The club and, and the players in particular needed me to act a certain way and provide the leadership and, and guidance and, and that's what I did but um, yeah I'm, I'm ruthless in a lot of ways but I'm ruthless on myself more than anyone so um, that's what I expected from myself and, and that's what the guys needed so I just I, as I said I'd expect that from other guys in that position and I think instinctively that's what they'd do as well so um, I don't there'd be very few people I think that would whinge and complain in that situation they just get on with it and uh, and do what they need to do for the club and themselves and, and, and the players. It's a big career, isn't it? A couple of all Australians that secured a best and fairest at Essendon. You'd have to say he's had, uh, as a number one draft pick, a big career. I mean, we judge number ones harshly, but he's been a good number one, a very good one. And he did do a lot for the club. He took up the captaincy. Did you enjoy that responsibility? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a burden or anything as such. I'd, 
always saw myself as a leader, so I wasn't going to change anything. I didn't need to change anything. So the only thing I did need to change is, is lessen or lower my expectations on, on the group and the club at that particular time. And I think looking back on it, um, and I have had time to reflect, and even, even during the moment, which you rarely get to do is reflect on um, the situation you're in, but it was one of the most enjoyable footballs, uh, football years I've had. It was amazing how enjoyable, enjoyable you can make it when there's no expectations of performance and wins and losses. This could be a massive momentum changer in the history of the Essendon Football Club. This wasn't supposed to happen, Jared. It wasn't supposed to be like this. All that. We grew immensely as a, as a footy club and me individually grew a lot during that, during that year. And you did bounce out of it really well as well, individually and as a team. Obviously, you've well publicised that you wanted to play on next year. Does that mean that you leave with any sort of animosity or are you leaving on good terms with the club? No, I, I, I said earlier in the week that um, you now they had time about obviously hearing the decision I wasn't too happy with it but yeah it wasn't anger and, and bitterness didn't really ever enter my mind I was I was just sad and disappointed that this is what it's kind of come to um, and that's I had prepared for it but I said I'm I'm a realist I'm I know what the industry is like I've been around long enough now and it's ruthless it's demanding it's there's a brutality to it that uh, it is high goodbye and, and next man up mentality and that's takes a, you know, taking nothing away from the support of the club's given me and St Kilda for 10 years and Essendon for six years so and the AFL fraternity too so uh, I, I expect them to make that decision to have expected the club Essendon and even St Kilda back in the day to make those tough decisions to make us better. Now this week you've had a really good chance to, to reminisce and look back on some of your, your favourite memories. What are some of the things that, that you, think, you think stick out to you? Uh, as much as I like love playing and love competing on game day and I love competing at training and coming to train, I think it'll be all the small things that uh, you, you kind of take for granted at the time when you're in the situation and living the moment. So the camaraderie when you walk into the change rooms, um, the inner straight tr trips you have together, training camps I loved uh, to get away in an elite environment and train. They're unique places, footy clubs, um, and so it's yeah, it's hard to reflect now because I'm you know kind of still living it, but it's still early days. But I think the time I've had to reflect in the last four or five days, I think those are the things I'll miss most, and and footy trips as well. So hopefully we've got one last hurrah in us. So. Uh, I always said to my wife, if it's after my last ever game, or if I was to retire, and it's, uh, a last footy trip is uh, non-negotiable. And if this is the end, what is it that you'd like to be remembered for? Oh, look, I hate, I hate talking about myself as much as I, <laughs> I joke about it with the boys sometimes and uh, in the change rooms. But um, no, I'll, I'll let, I'll let others. My, my legacy will be. Um, reflected in the way others talk about me, not, not myself, so I'm not comfortable answering that question. Well, whatever the future may be, thank you so much for your outstanding contribution in the red and black and, and good luck in your next step. Yeah, thanks mate. I do take this opportunity to thank mainly the supporters of Essendon and uh, it was something that really did attract me coming to Essendon, I guess, when people talk about big footy clubs, the only reason you know, certain clubs are thrown into that bracket is because of the support um, they get from fans and, and the large supporter groups they have with that. And and there's obviously a bit of you know success uh, in past years that that contribute to that. But um, that's one of the things that did attract me is that the large supporter group and the fan base that Essendon ha has and have had for a very long time. So. Um, from the day I arrived, through all the through all the uh, Assad investigation, that the, the supporters uh, were were unbelievable. So it'll be something I'll never forget. So I thank the supporters um, and my time at Essendon in the last six years. And I think I speak for the other boys, and I've said it before, but um, the fans are the most loyal people in football. So without them, 
we wouldn't be here, the clubs wouldn't be here and the AFL wouldn't be what it is. So um, thank you to the, the uh, Essendon family and the, the Bomber Army, the fans.